Good day, ladies and gents. This is I am Hotep Jeb Mutalib Atum L. George Smith. This is Golden Moore Services. Uh, this is legal education. I'm not an attorney. Um, I don't have any type of law practice. Um, if you're seeking that, uh, there's plenty of attorneys to call. I'm not one, and I never want to be one. So let me just put that out there. Um, and also, let me put out there that um, I might have said something in my uh, previous videos about the Amen Osiris um, saying that I lost all respect for him. I didn't lose all respect for him. Um, I guess what I really should have said, I was probably feeling myself too much at that moment. Uh, what I wanted to say was about the whole Jeremiah thing. I think he was clowning uh jeremiah edwards in one of his videos and then he came up with the n-word and he said he well he's white he can't be an n-word actually he still can be an n-word so and i took that as um i guess if you call yourself black then you're an n-word which is false um because i've um you know i do my his i do my research even on that word and um you know england uh, used to call the Irish little green niggas, you know, because they believed in leprechauns, and you know the English have always suppressed Scotland and uh, and I and Ireland, and so they used to call the Irish little green niggas. Um, during World War II, the Japanese soldiers to tell you that the Americans were calling them yellow niggers. So um, you know the N word doesn't mean black, and so I I took I didn't take offense to it because I'm not black. Um, I'm a Nuavian. Uh, I do have African blood in my veins, no doubt, but I don't call myself black. You know, I'm not a color, you know. So, um, that's just my opinion on it. If you got anything else, uh, that you would like to, you know, reply back to that, you know, uh, hit me up on the horn. You know, you can go to the website or you can reply back to this video. But anyway, uh, I guess the purpose of today's video is that I want to show you that even though you consent, uh, consent does not mean uh, automatic jurisdiction. And I wanted to actually read this whole section. I know it's going to seem kind of boring, but you'll get the gist of it after I'm done. And by the way, this is out of my, my favorite book here. Um, oh, yeah, this book is called... Uh, the treatise on the jurors on the jurisdiction of the courts and it's written by a gentleman named uh, john cleland wells who lived about a hundred years ago but he was a scholar at uh legal matters dealing with jurisdiction of the courts and um this work has been preserved actually by a company called scholarly select and uh, you can find these books on amazon and ebay um so these works have been compiled and put back together as if they're the original and um and these books are pretty valuable to uh, my research uh, helping people uh with matters of jurisdiction um ex parte i'm getting a lot of calls about ex parte matters where um these crooked attorneys are telling single women um to to disappear for a while um, and then come back and either get like a divorce or try to get um, a child support order decreed uh, ex parte. And then when it comes time to serving, you know, the, the defendant, which is the husband, about 99.9% .9 of the time, they never even serve them, but they fill out the paperwork like they did serve them. So all this needs to be rebutted in a motion uh which i'm working on a couple motions right now but um it's important when you write the paperwork these affidavits that you're not just stating the law and i have to i have to put emphasis on that you're not just stating the law you're also stating the the facts and events and the circumstances in which the law applies okay i see a lot of paperwork uh, from people, you know, I'm, a, I'm just going to put out there, Rick W. I've seen a lot of his paperwork. Uh, there's no individual facts from his client. 
You know what I'm saying? And I heard he's sending out packets like a, 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 a secure party creditor packets and but for child support and trying to charge a ridiculous amount of money, just like Wasil Bay does. And it, pe people stop doing that. Stop doing that. I'd rather you go to Amin Osiris, man, because that dude, at least he knows the law um, and he could get you off. You know, um, I've seen I think Rick got two people off, too, but like two out of like, you know, twenty five hundred like uh, Yah is magnified said is not very good. Not very good. So I got things in process right now where I take my time with it. I don't send out templates. I want to talk to people. I want to get to know you. I want to get to know your situation because your situation, it may be too grave. I may not be able to help you. I'm like, you know, go to, you know, go to somebody who will sell you some magic tricks, some shit that you want to hear because people just want to hear. They want to get pumped up, but they don't want to understand and put in the work. So I don't deal with people like that. You know, if you don't want to put in the work, I'm not selling you a packet. You won't get any packets over here. You're going to get like authentic paperwork that I put my heart, my blood and sweat and tears into it, you know, because I want to see you get free. You know what I'm saying? I even give discounts to people. Ask them, ask my clients. I give discounts to them. If they're indigent, I give discounts to them because I'm trying to see you put this through and what not only will it help my reputation, it'll help your life and you can spread the word wherever you at that it is possible to beat these, these, these beasts, you know, is it to beat the evil priest in the black robes. So anyway, I know I went off on a tangent. It's my video. I'm going to run it how I run it. But let's read. <laughs> let's read subsection 50. Oh, yeah. And thanks, uh, Wasil Bay, man. Um, I know the publicity was kind of negative, but it also drove more traffic to my site and a couple more customers. So thanks, man. Keep up the good work. I appreciate it. You and Kish. Thanks, man. So anyway, uh, let's read subsection 50. All right. So it says, no, nor will a court take jurisdiction order to click to declare the law or construe it, even where the officer waives his constitutional exception exemption and joins with the relator in asking the exercise of this jurisdiction. In a case of this kind, the court held that the exemption from coercion by the courts is not a personal privilege of the incumbent of the office created for his benefit and to be asserted or waived at his pleasure. An executive officer cannot surrender the defenses which, not for his but the public good, the Constitution has placed around his office. So they're saying that the Constitution, the office, is the, those offices are protected. You know, like uh, the office of the president is protected. Congress, I mean, they're protected by the Constitution. Uh, even though all inherent power is within the people of each state and the country once they get in the office they're protected so understand that i mean there are processes to get them out of office like an impeachment or something but that's very hard to do all right so that's so the judges are saying you can't um waive your exemption of off of office because that's the duty of the office not necessarily the individual sitting in the chair activating the powers uh, of that office. Okay. Still less can his consent authorize the court to transgress the constitutional limitation of its powers and assume a jurisdiction, which by the fundamental law, it is expressly forbidden to exercise. So right there, uh, they're just saying that, can he consent to give up his powers and transgress, um, which means I guess uh, a real simple way to transgress a, sim a synonym for it is to uh, give up or transfer over, right? So he wants to uh, give up his rights of office, and I don't know why, his defenses of office to the court, to a Supreme Court, when the Supreme Court fundamentally is forbidden um to accept any consent like that from an executive officer. So uh, so basically the officer cannot waive his constitutional um, um, protections of holding that office. And so a governor cannot submit to the courts in this way any more than a subordinate officer. 
but there is not a universal acquiescence herein. The Supreme Court of Illinois in 1872 accepted the voluntary submission of Governor Palmer and thereon determined the effect of the Constitution of 1870 on the office of police magistrate in the city of Chicago and remarked, this voluntary submission by the executive matter involved to the adjudication of this court relieves the court of all of all consideration of the question as to the authority of the court to coerce the performance of a public duty by the executive of the state and we may proceed to determine the question as if it were a controversy between private individuals it seems to me however that the doctrine consent cannot confer jurisdiction applies here in the absence of an express constitutional one i hope you guys understand what that means it seems to me however that the doctrine and this is consent cannot confer jurisdiction when there was none so going back linking this to child support even though you may have signed some paperwork and i'm not saying this is a thousand percent uh accurate but i think it is it's a doctrine this because you consented to child support doesn't mean they have jurisdiction and it doesn't mean that you've transferred adjudication to that court to be judged over because remember if you're one of my clients you know they got to have two out of the three uh jurisdictional requisites to even hear a case so the plaintiff which is okay baby moms in this case comes and says oh you know deadbeat dad over here is not paying or i want deadbeat dad to pay child support so she brings litigation she's the plaintiff um she goes to child support child support is the one that actually sues you so it's the county that tries to sue you because they're trying to sue you to get jurisdiction but if even if you signed paperwork it's still a huge question because consent cannot confer jurisdiction you know i still have to look this up but pretty much if you sign some paperwork maybe even if it is contractually uh legally binding the court still may not have jurisdiction okay so this is something that uh you know if you're following me you're listening to me um this is something I'm researching. This doctrine here, consent cannot confer jurisdiction. That's huge. I I think that's huge. That's, that's a landmark statement here. Um, so I'll be putting that in some of my uh, affidavits that I write for people. And I can't, you know, you know, people asking me, you know, send them affidavits. I can't, can't do that. First of all, you ain't paying nothing. And then second of all, I don't know your situation. You know what I'm saying? This ain't a, this isn't a, a plug and play type of thing. The judge, there's a lot of judges tell, trust me, there's a lot of judges out there who see these, see these paperworks all the time that they think it's a template. They're going to think you're a joke. They're going to think you're a joke. Cause first there's the written test, right? Your affidavit. And then when you go into court, you got to know what the hell you're talking about. That's, that's the spoken word. That's the, that's the verbal test. Right. So I work with people uh, to go in court and, um, you know, and know what to say and what laws to bring up and to bring up the facts of your case, which is like telling a story. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I did this at this time or whatever. And here's the document that it gave me, you know, use their documents against them, you know. So anyway, um, that's what I wanted to share with you guys. And I scanned something else, too the defeat of jurisdiction jurisdiction is so huge in in these cases so actually let me read this let me read this okay um subsection 73 on the treatise of the jurisdiction of the courts by john cleland wells so here we go subsection 73 it is a settled rule that the jurisdiction of superior courts cannot be taken away except by express words or necessary implication and as we have previously remarked, constitutional powers cannot be taken away by mere legislation. Even where a legislature grants a certain body full power and authority to approve or set aside an election, 
it is not to be implied that the usual supervisory powers of the Supreme Court is taken away. Now, I've already, he's saying that uh, even though a statute says that the matter is concluded between the parties, it's still appealable even if um, the statute says, well, the statute would never say it's not appealable because that's a court rule, but it will say that the matter is final. And they're just saying that um, uh, even though they say the matter is final, you can still write a certiori or um, you can still appeal the lower court's decision, which is inferior compared to a, an appellant or a, a superior court in the state or the country. So actually, I brought this up, Article 1, Section 8, and I believe this is Clause 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So Article 1, Section 8, uh, Clause 9, this is the powers of Congress uh, to constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court. So these tribunals, uh, they are legislative courts, you know, like Article I courts. And then w within the U.S. Constitution, an Article Three court is a judicial court where they can um, um, adjudicate law and not just ministerially um, judge law, you know, the, um, magistrates, and I've heard this too, like judge magistrates aren't really judges. Yes, they are. They are judges and they've been granted, uh, the judgeship from the delegation of powers from the state Supreme court. Cause the state Supreme court can't hear all the cases. They can only hear so many, um, cases. And they usually take the one that have the most public interest in it or uh, would set a new precedence. So they can't hear all the cases. It's too many. Uh, okay. So that's why they've delegated some of their powers to the appellant courts, right? So they can hear appeals from the lower courts, which are the county courts. Now the county court is not a judicial court. It's a legislative court. And there's the executive court in there too, you know, cause it's title four D court and it is a court. It's just an inferior court. And I'll do another video on inferior courts have no power at all to do anything if you don't consent to it. And that goes back to um, 1 USC subsection 204 when dealing with a uh, positive law, uh, law that's, it's not really law unless you consent to it basically, right? So going back to, uh, I think I said clause nine, you know, the, uh, the, le the legislature has the power to create tribunals, but it's inferior to the Supreme Court, which means the Supreme Court has supervisory powers over all courts. If you call yourself a court, your supervisor is going to be the Supreme Court, right? Um, so let's keep going here. Um, uh, of this, the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania remarked, these words cannot have greater effect than the words final and conclusive between the parties used in a great variety of, of acts of assembly. And yet it is a well-settled principle that these expressions do not take away the jurisdiction of the court. They're talking about the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. The legislature being aware that this is a well-settled rule of construction. Yeah, because it goes back to the constitution would would if they had intended to preclude inquiry have prevented this court from exerting their superintending authority by express prohibition which they can't do and i love this book because each, you're seeing these uh letters and parentheses they all represent case law so you can go look it up and this matter has ever been carried so far as to hold that where a statute says such a matter shall finally be determined by quarter sessions only and that and that no other court shall intermingle these negative words do not prohibit a certiori so that's actually if someone did write a statute and said oh the supreme court can't enter inter, intermiddle in this or no other court can 
that's actually against the Constitution. That's that's uh, it's void. That statute would be void because you you can't write words like that, right? So Congress cannot go outside their uh, congressional, I mean, constitutional authority to exclude the Supreme Court uh, from their tribunals because I just showed you that the Supreme Court is superior to a legislative tribunal. Okay, this appears extreme, but the rule herein would probably prevail and the words be construed only to forbid any other original jurisdiction. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, yeah, this is important. However, in Potter's Duaris, I don't know who that is, 229, we find this remark quoted from Tyndall C.J. Yet, where the object and intent of the statute manifestly require it, words that appear to be permissive only shall be construed as obligatory and shall have the effect of ousting the courts of their jurisdiction. And the author appends the remark that in that case, wherein the rule was thus laid down on a full analysis of the statute in question, the courts thought the jurisdiction was taken away. And I suppose, let me read this. I just want to get to one. Okay, uh, here's another quote. The sense and spirit <coughs> of an act, however, its scope and intention are primarily to be regarded in the construction of statutes, and it matters not the terms used by the legislature in delivering its commands are not the most apt to express its meaning provided the object be plain and intelligible and expressed with sufficient distinctness, right, to enable the judge to collect from it any part of the act. The object once understood, judges are so to construe an act to suppress the mischief, right, that means um, when they read a statute written by the legislature, if it has any... Um, uh, backdooring anything that's deceiving to try to trick the citizen into becoming a victim of the statute law merchant and have to pay for violating some kind of statute that wasn't intended for for the public good or the state's right of uh, parens patriae okay or advance the remedy but yet the court is not at liberty for that purpose to introduce into or exclude words from any stat from any clause of a statute. Basically, that's what they're, what they're saying is, um, you know, in child support, they're saying it's a voluntary process. And that's the intention of the legislators to make it a, a voluntary process. Now, if you go into court and say, oh, I didn't volunteer, there's no contract, I didn't sign anything, there's no jurisdiction, the judge can't say, um, even though they didn't put the words in a statute, I'm going to construe it as, uh, you are under their jurisdiction, um, involuntarily, right? Because involuntarily is not a word in the statute and they can't put words in addition just because the case is in front of them and they have a want of jurisdiction that they include those words to find you guilty. And that's also called uh, not a bill of attainder, but an ex post facto law. An ex post facto law means you're making up law just because the situation that the system or the court may be in, just like I had mentioned, all of a sudden now they put involuntary in it to make you guilty or to make you suffer. That's called an ex post facto law. And that's also um, prohibited by the constitution. So, and I'm hearing some people say, oh, you know, there's no such thing as statutory jurisdiction. Yeah, it is right here. The words that are in the statute. If, uh, if you don't fit the criteria to be a victim of the statute, you're not in the jurisdiction of the statute. Therefore, there's no jurisdiction, right? So I don't understand that argument because the words convey the jurisdiction and not the other way around the act doesn't convey the jurisdiction the words do and if the act is part of that statute then yes they can bring you in on it so anyway just wanted to kind of make a quick video real quick um 
you know, uh, peace to everybody out there who watches my videos and other people's videos too, even though I don't agree with how they do business or the things that they're saying in their videos. I don't feel like they have a full understanding of what they're doing. I think they're just trying to sell packets. Um, I don't sell packets. So if you want a packet free solution, um, I can educate you in that. If you're looking for packets, you're a dumbass and you're still looking for packets. There's plenty of people who sell packets, you know, go to them. Don't bother me with packets. I don't do packets. I do authentic writing and research. So if you're into that, cool. If you're not, you know, uh, keep it moving. There's plenty of people out there for you, but it, the important thing is to, you know, to breathe again, to be able to exhale and breathe again without thinking about suicide. I've heard a lot of stories, man. I've heard a lot of, um, shit that'll make a grown man cry what they're doing to people and uh these dudes they tough they're just not tough uh spiritually and mentally and that's and that's where i'm guiding people you know as a noabian i do that because i'm going through a spiritual transformation myself into being the net uh the being the net tear that we call the el kalum which is the all nothing exists without the all you know, and you can't add to the all because where would you get it from? And you can't take from the all because where would you take it from? You know, he's the create. it's the creator of the boundless universe. So, um, so if you need some help, hit me up, uh, or watch my videos. Uh, hopefully, you know, I can give some words of encouragement to people out there looking for answers, um, looking for hope. You know, people just looking for hope, man. That That's what it's all about, you know. And uh, that's it, fellas. So y'all have a good day. Uh, you know, try to work things out with your baby mom if you can. If you can't, get to researching, man. <laughs> or hit me up. I help you research. Um, all right. I'm out. Peace to the gods. Peace to all the, peace to all the moors, all the clean moors. There's a lot of dirty moors out there man um uh especially uh, you know what before i let y'all go um you know no offense to the moorish science temple but there is a lot of fraud going on in the moorish science temple of america uh fbi uh report let me put this in here look at that fbi moorish science temple of america uh hold up let's see well anyway you could find out a lot of uh <laughs> just a lot of um damn i they just commit a lot of scams yeah i just have to look fbi file on the more science temple of america but just look at this i mean they've they committed a lot of fraud you know um I know because I was almost a victim of it. So, you know, ask your questions. Don't be afraid to ask people questions, man. And if they can't provide proof of what they do, um, they're asking you to send packets and then you're getting stuff back saying this stuff is unintelligible, it doesn't make sense, uh, then you know you've wasted your money. You, you've wasted your money and you wasted your time. So, anyway. Uh, peace to the gods, shalom, wa barukat. Um, that just means peace and blessings in the Wabic. And uh, I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Peace.